The world's most expensive drug costs about two and a half million dollars. You're probably thinking, why so expensive? But the real question is, would you pay two and a half million dollars to save your baby's life? Because that's what this drug is capable of. And the way it does this is pretty insane. Spoiler alert, it involves genetic editing. But what is this mystery medicine? Is it safe? And does the end result justify the eye-watering price tag? I'm Dr. Ausmine, and this is the world's most expensive drug. Zolgensma, Onisimogene Abiparvivic, groundbreaking new gene therapy drug, approved today by the FDA, almost two million pounds. This little boy is Arthur. Let me tell you his story. Arthur was born at the beginning of 2021. His parents were devastated to learn from doctors that Arthur had spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA for short. It's a progressive neurological condition, one that would rob Arthur of his mobility and, very soon, his life. Because babies born with severe SMA type 1, the most common type, have a life expectancy of just two years. At five months old, baby Arthur already found it difficult to move his arms and legs and couldn't lift his head. Signs that some permanent damage had already been done. The clock was ticking. So when Arthur's parents learned that there was a new life-saving drug on the horizon that could help their baby boy, they fought tooth and nail to ensure he would receive it. Among delays and uncertainty, there finally came the announcement that the NHS would be funding the treatment. That means Arthur is one of the first people in the UK to receive the life-saving drug Zolgensma. Let me tell you a bit about Zolgensma. In March 2021, the list price for Zolgensma was 1.79 million British pounds, equivalent to 2.49 million US dollars. In clinical studies, Zolgensma has helped babies to reach milestones such as breathe without a ventilator, sit up on their own, and crawl and walk after a single infusion treatment. That's according to NHS England. Zolgensma is a one-time gene therapy that contains a replica of a missing gene called SMN1. The active ingredient in Zolgensma is called Onisemnogene Abiparvivec. Try saying that three times fast. It uses a virus that goes into the nerves and restores the SMN1 gene. The nerves can then produce proteins that are essential for nerve function and controlling muscle movement. The confidential agreement between the NHS and pharmaceutical company Novartis means that the NHS can buy the drug at a hugely discounted price. As many as 80 babies and young children could benefit from it every year. NHS England's chief executive, Sir Simon Stevens, said at the time, This deal is a life changer for youngsters with this cruel disease and for their families. To fully understand how Zolgensma works, we need to talk about our nervous system and how the condition SMA affects it. You see, our nervous system is incredibly complex and beautiful, but Let's break it down simply. We have the brain, which is the body's main control center, the spinal cord, its signal distribution center, and the nerves, messengers to both the vital organs and the outer reaches of the body. Now we have many different nerve types, but the two we need to understand are the sensory neurons and the motor neurons. Sensory neurons receive information from our surroundings. The five senses, touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing, but there are so many more like temperature, pressure, pain and vibration. Meanwhile, motor nerves carry signals that instruct our muscles to move. If your motor nerves stopped working, your muscles would start to weaken. Then, they'd start to waste away. Eventually, you would become completely paralyzed. And that's exactly what happens in spinal muscular atrophy.
Spinal muscular atrophy is a genetic disorder. Although it's rare, it's actually the most common genetic cause of infant death if left untreated. 40 children a year are born with the most severe form of the disease. Drug treatments have only recently come on the market, so historically, SMA has been untreatable and inevitably led to paralysis and early death in these kids. But Dr. Asmine, I hear you ask, why do the motor neurons in a baby with SMA start to die off in the first place? The answer is that gene called SMN1, which stands for survival of motor neuron gene 1. Unsurprisingly, this plays a role in ensuring the survival of motor neurons by producing a protein called SMN. It's in particularly high concentration in the lower motor neurons found in the brainstem and spinal cord. In spinal muscular atrophy, where there's a mutation in the SMN1 gene, there's a lack of working SMN protein that can keep these cells alive. Okay, Asmine, so SMN is this protein that keeps motor neurons alive, but how does it do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. The SMN protein is found in cellular structures known as gems. No, not that kind of gem, this kind. It appears to be important in processing molecules called messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. RNA is very similar to DNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acids, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acids, and they each have their crucial role to play. Our genes are basically instruction manuals for making proteins that our body needs to do literally anything. Think about it, you need protein to maintain those mwah, sweet gains, right? Well, so do your cells. Essentially, the information coded in our DNA is transferred into the messenger RNA. The mRNA then delivers these instructions to ribosomes, the protein-making factories of the cell. The newly manufactured proteins help the cells to survive and multiply and do what they gotta do. Okay, Asmine, so DNA goes to mRNA goes to protein, and SMN helps the mRNA to work. But what happens without any SMN to help this process? Now, we don't fully understand how SMN works. But what we do know is that a complete lack of SMN is fatal, at least in mice and other animals. Because if the motor neurons become damaged, it's like ripping an electrical cord. The signals will not get through to the muscles. And without nourishment and connection, both the motor neurons and the muscles they supply just wither and die. So it's lucky that humans have at least one more SMN producing gene, SMN2, which produces a tiny amount of SMN that's just enough to keep the motor neurons on life support if the SMN1 gene is faulty. All right, Asmine, so you're telling me that these babies with spinal muscular atrophy have a faulty SMN1 gene and an SMN2 gene that's barely keeping them alive. So what next? Well, that, my friends, is where Zolgensma comes in. So how does Zolgensma help to prevent the death of motor neurons? Zolgensma is marketed as a one-time intravenous infusion. As we said earlier, Zolgensma is a gene therapy, so it essentially inserts genetic material into the patient's DNA, allowing them to produce more SMN protein. You are literally editing the patient's DNA with this drug. But Asmine, how do you go about inserting genetic material into someone's DNA? The answer is a virus. The virus is used as a vector, in other words, a way to transmit the genetic information it contains into the human host without causing any kind of disease. Okay, imagine you're injecting jam into a donut. The virus is the needle, the jam is the SMN1 gene, and the donut is your DNA. You inject the jam into the donut, remove the needle, and now you have your lovely jam-filled donut without having to worry about the needle. That made sense, right? I'm sure it did. Huh, I really want a donut right now. Anyway, Zolgensma uses the virus AAV9, but not the entire virus, just the shell or capsid. This viral shell has been genetically modified to contain a version of the SMN1 gene that's missing. When Zolgensma is administered, the virus delivers that gene into the motor neurons so that they can start producing the all-important SMN protein. The new source of SMN protein means that the motor neurons can survive, the connection between the brain and muscles is saved, and the baby can start to crawl, walk, and live a longer life than they otherwise would have. And once the virus has done its job, it's excreted from the body. 
lovely. Dr. Asmine, I hear you ask, is Zolgensma safe though? As far as we can tell from clinical studies, Zolgensma is safe. If you're worried about the virus causing damage, then no, it doesn't appear to cause any harm or long-lasting infection. And this technology of virus-introducing genetic material has been used safely before. But Zolgensma does have side effects like any other drug. The main ones are nausea, low platelet levels in the blood, and liver dysfunction. So to prevent liver problems, for example, steroid medication is given for a few months afterwards. But Asmine, if Zolgensma is given as a one-time only drug, then how long does it last? The truth is, we don't know yet. Most neurons cannot divide and regenerate like other cells in the body. In theory, as long as the motor neurons are there, they won't be replaced, they're permanent. So it's possible that the genetic changes caused by Zolgensma will permanently remain in place as well. But this is speculation, we don't have enough evidence yet to say for sure. We really need to answer the two and a half million dollar question. Why on earth is Zolgensma so expensive? One reason is that it's life-saving. The drugs manufacturer Novartis has said the price is justified because Zolgensma dramatically transforms the lives of families affected by this devastating disease. On top of that, the target market for this drug is pretty small, given that SMA is overall a rare condition. So the pharmaceutical company does need a way to recoup the very high costs of research, development, and production. Drugs like these are sometimes called orphan drugs because they're designed for diseases that are so rare that they just wouldn't be profitable to produce without government assistance. However, the huge cost has understandably been controversial. That's why healthcare services around the world, like the NHS in the UK, are trying to secure Zolgensma for a lower price per patient. Okay, Asmine, I understand now. Zolgensma is so expensive because it's a groundbreaking genetic treatment with high research and development costs for a very rare condition and it can save babies' lives. But Dr. Asmine, I have one more question. Where can I watch more of your videos? Well, this one is me reacting to Mr. Beast not eating for 30 days, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Like, subscribe, and stay groovy.